Acts chapter 19, verse 1 to 6 and 11 to 16. And it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples, and he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, No, we've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptised? They said, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptised with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. And God was doing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons that had touched his skin were carried away to the sick, and their diseases left them, and the evil spirits came out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists undertook to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, I adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul proclaims. Seven sons of a Jewish high priest named Sceva were doing this. But the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I recognize, but who are you? And the man in whom was the evil spirit leapt on them, mastered all of them, and overpowered them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Morning. What an extraordinary chapter so far. We're just halfway through it, but I think it's uh, I interesting here that Luke is pointing us to the incredible workings of the Holy Spirit. He is showing the reader here, the Holy Spirit is what makes all the difference. We've read 18 chapters together, and we've seen since the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost in chapter two, extraordinary power, authority, and advance of the kingdom of God. We've seen the, these men who were once uh, fearful, uh, once in, in Paul's case, hated Christ and the workings of, uh, of the Christians. Now, uh, with authority and power and anointing, able to see the kingdom advance, able to see uh, incredible resilience when it comes to uh, being thrown in prison and being persecuted horrendously. They also uh, seeing amazing miracles, people healed, demons fleeing and now in this chapter as we've just read just just unbelievable authority that Paul's handkerchief could touch somebody and their demon could would flee or they would find healing I mean just extraordinary power and authority that we have not yet even seen it it brings us back to what Christ said doesn't it that you will see things and you'll be able to do things more than I have done just amazing Luke and, and God in this chapter are making a point. It's a bit of a pit stop in some ways to say, look, I want you to remember what you're seeing here is the work of the Holy Spirit. It is of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And this Holy Spirit is available to believers. Paul asks these believers at the beginning of the chapter, did you receive the Holy Spirit? They didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. They were believers in Christ, and yet they didn't have the, uh, they perhaps were not completely um, converted to Christianity yet. They had believed the preparatory work of uh, John the Baptist, this, this work that he had done to prepare the way for Christ, and they had believed that, and they had repented. Now, Paul was saying, now let me tell you about Christ, the one who... Uh, John the Baptist was preparing the way for and let me tell you about how he has come so that you could be filled with his life his power his Holy Spirit there is more than simply turning away from sin there is being empowered by the life and power of Jesus Christ it then goes on to show us that uh, this is not about hocus pocus this is not about just power for power's sake this is not something that is a formulaic thing that you say x y and z abracadabra and things can happen that are extraordinary no it's about knowing him living to honor him having turned from your sin trusting in him 
knowing and understanding what his life, death and resurrection means for you. See, these sons of Schema thought that they could just say, in the name of Jesus, let it be. They learned pretty quickly that is not the case. And the surrounding villages and people, it's interesting to me that they didn't then scoff at the work of Christ. They didn't say, look at these idiots who thought they could just say this man's name and, and look at them, they got beaten up. No, actually it struck fear into the surrounding villages and people. They actually realised that God is not something to be trifled with. It's so, such an interesting passage for us. The two things that we draw out of it that I've been hinting at here, the many things you can draw from it. The Holy Spirit is available to believers. It's available to us today. Do you know the ongoing infilling of the Holy Spirit? Have you ever had a believer lay hands on you as we see the practice in the New Testament? Today is a, is a day, right now, to stop. If you think, God, I know there must be more. I know a lack of power, a lack of self-control, a lack of fruit. I know there must be more. I just know it. I know instinctively I'm frustrated. God, there must be more than this. Well, it could well be that you're right because there is much more of the filling of the Holy Spirit that you have not yet enjoyed. Why don't you pray, God, not, as I said, not just a, a abracadabra prayer, not just a heartless prayer, just say, God, okay, well, but really from your heart to say, Father, I know there must be more. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit. Please, I don't understand it all. I don't get it all, but I see here in Acts, there's a filling of the Holy Spirit that if you're without it, you're without the power, you're without the anointing, you're without the, uh, the resource that is promised to us. Why don't you pray that today? Why don't you get a Christian brother or sister to lay hands on you at the, at the soonest opportunity? You can wash their hands, obviously, <laughs> before and after, as we have to do. But why don't we seek what is available to us? And secondly, we do it with reverence. We're, we're not a people who think, this is great, I get to get power, to get to do stuff. No, this is about the advance of the kingdom. This is about knowing the, 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 the power of God, not the power that we can have available to us just to do what we want. Not, not so that I could have power, but so that I could know his power. So that I could know his power to advance his purposes. It's so important that we're a spirit-filled people. Are you, have you been continuing on as hard as you can in your own efforts? Maybe today God's saying, please tap into what I have got available for you. Father God, we, we need your Holy Spirit's power. We need to know your infilling we need to know your presence. We need to know that intimacy that gives us wisdom, that gives us insight and understanding, that gives us courage and conviction, and that gives us authority and anointing. We need it so that we could see our lives move on from fear and pride and self-consummation to being full of mission and purpose and drive for the kingdom of God. I pray, Father, come and fill us with your spirit. Lord, let us seek out and be determined to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that we would not just seek your Holy Spirit for the wrong reasons, but that we would, with reverence, desire to do what you have called us to do, and that we would see tremendous fruit as we do that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I've prayed. Don't let that be your prayer. Pray yourself. Ask God. Ask brothers and sisters to lay hands on you. Let's see ourselves filled with the Spirit.
that something would change, that something would advance, that we would know, as it says in Acts, these men have turned the world upside down. I want the church in Ipswich to turn Ipswich upside down as we're filled with the Holy Spirit, anointing, power, authority, God's love for this town. See you soon. Have a good day.